Deep inside every one of us is a lion waiting to be unleashed. Are you ready to be unleashed into your destiny? As we stand on the edge of time, the web of deception is being unraveled. Carl Joseph offers you the red pill and the keys to unlock the shackles of your mind. Get ready to be transformed by God's supernatural power. Let's join him now. Friend, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now these are the words of Jesus in Matthew 6:24. In Aramaic, the language that many people believe Jesus spoke, the word for money or wealth is called mammon. In two instances, Matthew 6.24 and Luke 16.13, Mammon is identified as a rival to God for the loyalty of the disciples, and the same warning is pertinent to us today. Jesus asks us, who will you obey, friend, God or money? It's impossible to serve this God called Mammon and the true Yahweh God at the same time. The New Testament calls money uncertain riches for a reason. They're so labeled because they cannot be trusted. But God can, friend, and he offers the greatest return of investment of all when we sow into his kingdom. In 1 Timothy 6.17, the Apostle Paul warns the rich not to be high-minded. And I quote, Charge them that are rich in this world that they not be high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. This word high-minded in the modern vernacular really means arrogant, and there's potential for the rich to become arrogant because they have so much money. In Matthew 6.24, Jesus considers riches as an idol, master or god of the human heart, something in direct conflict with the worship of the true God. If ever there was a topic that stirs up passion in this life, it's money. Did you know that Jesus spoke more about money than any other topic in the Gospels besides the kingdom of God? In 11 of the 39 parables, he talks about money and even more about money than heaven or hell. Therefore, this topic of money is very close to God's heart because it's often in direct competition with him for the allegiance of men's hearts. The point Jesus was making is that money should never be served, but we should serve God and use money instead. We should use it to honor God firstly and also pay earthly dues when necessary to the ruling authorities in this life. Now did you notice in the passage I read that if you attempt to serve two masters, you will end up either despising or hating the other. In other words, you need to pick a side, friend, because trying to play both sides will result in enormous frustration. Friend, the issues of life come down to our heart's attitude, and money is no different. If someone has an issue with money, it originates with the heart. If there's one thing I know about the Lord, He will challenge any idols in our lives on a regular basis. If that idol seeks to gain precedence over our desire for the Lord, God will test it. Friend, we must lay upon the altar and allow God to burn our idols up. In Luke 16.11, Jesus reminds us that if we're not faithful with material things, how then can we be faithful in the spiritual matters, which are far more important? He says, If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Friend, those true riches are spiritual matters, and there is no greater way for you to demonstrate your faithfulness to God than in the physical area of giving firstly. Jesus also warned us that we should not be storing up riches in fear or demonstrating a miserly spirit. You see, those who store up riches have a fear of losing them. Money is sometimes called currency because it must flow in order for it to be useful to mankind, like the flow of a river that takes its course. If you store up your wealth, it becomes a dam instead of a river, and it will be unable to flow into the areas of your life that it needs to. Jesus actually spoke about this himself in Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21. He said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Friend, Jesus admonished us to lay up treasure in heaven. But let me ask you this, what are the treasures that make it to heaven? The answer is souls. The souls of people that you win for Christ are eternal treasures stored up for you in heaven. Friend, we will have no need for earthly money in heaven because it will be useless. That's why it's so important that we utilize it correctly on earth. 
Did you know that the Jews used money to trick Jesus? In another instance in Matthew 22, 19 through 21, Jesus asked the Jews to show him a coin used to pay the Roman tax. They handed Jesus a denarius, having the portrait and inscription of Caesar. In Jesus' day, Roman coins were inscribed with the emperor's image. Since the emperor was worshipped in the Roman Empire as a god, these coins were tantamount to the expression of idolatry. That coin could either have been a denarius of Caesar Augustus, who had died some 16 years before, or of Caesar Tiberius, who was on the throne at the time. By asking Jesus whether Jews should pay taxes, these Pharisees were trying to get Jesus to do one of two things. Number one, say it was wrong, and then they could make Jesus out to be a traitor before the Roman authorities. Or number two, say that Jesus should be paid, and then they could accuse Jesus of opposing God himself. This was especially pertinent because the inscription on the coins of that day typically acknowledged Roman gods. Jesus responded telling them that they were hypocrites because these Jews were carrying the very same coins they tempted Jesus with, so they were demonstrating idolatry. The Jews also instigated the business of exchanging Roman currency for temple currency in the temple courts because of these inscriptions of Roman gods on the coin. The money changers converted Roman money into orthodox coins for the temple half shekel, but in doing so they took an extortionate amount of money for themselves in exchange. This system became a means for certain Jews to become very rich, and they did. This hypocritical system infuriated Jesus so much, he overthrew the money changers' tables and then proclaimed this, My father's house is a place of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. In John's Gospel, it says Jesus was so upset, he made a whip of cords and drove out the money changers because he was so angry with them. But what is money exactly, friend? In commerce and in trade, money may be defined as a means of exchange. For the individual, money is a necessity if he is to live in our Western society, because bartering has become redundant. But money is more than just a means of exchange. It's a symbol of work. In order for money to be put into circulation, some kind of work has to be done first. So in other words, the dollar bill symbolizes your time and effort. So in a sense, money also represents a portion of your life. It's also tied to the stewardship of time. We utilize our God-given gifts of time and talent, which then produces work and ends up in the distribution of money for that effort. That's why it's so valuable to God, because in many ways the money we earn is representative of the time, energy, and talent that God has given us for His glory. Therefore, we are obligated, friend, to give some back to Him, who gave it all to us in the first place. Any type of gift we give to God is an act of worship and a pledge of loyalty between the giver and the receiver. In other words, as I give to you, Lord, I pledge my loyalty to you, Father, and my money gift to you is evidence of this. But friend, what are we supposed to do with that money? You see, friend, money is not inherently evil, but the Bible does say that the love of money is the root of all evil in the King James Version. Other translations will say that it is a root of evil, but not the root. But friend, we all know that when we serve money instead of God, our priorities are in the wrong place. Let me read First Timothy 6, 9 through 10. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Jesus also warned about this desire for wealth and its impact on the soul in Matthew sixteen twenty six. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Friend, it is a biblical truth that the pursuit of riches and fame in this earth comes at the expense of our very soul. Notice Jesus said you cannot gain the whole world and retain your soul. There's no profit in it. Then in the latter part of the verse, Jesus alludes to the fact that we can exchange our soul for the purposes of riches or perhaps even fame. Now, some might call me crazy, but it's a well-known fact that those who've researched it, that in the music industry today, some popular artists have gone on record saying that they've made literal satanic contracts for fame and money at the expense of their own soul. 
You might have heard of Robert Johnson, who was a great American blues musician in the early part of the 20th century. He was ranked fifth out of 100 on the Rolling Stones list as the greatest guitarist of all time. The legend goes that he wanted to be a great guitarist and was instructed to head to a crossroads. There he met the devil himself, who gave him complete mastery over the instrument. Those who knew Johnson before this encounter gave testimony to the fact that he couldn't even play a single tune on the guitar beforehand. And Johnson himself also did little to dispel the rumors, even stating that he had indeed made a deal with the Prince of Darkness. He went on to produce six records before his death at the age of 27 and joined the infamous 27 Club. Even today, several recording artists have allegedly sold their souls and even made mention of this in TV interviews, including Bob Dylan and Katy Perry. They went on record saying an unholy pact was made for fame and fortune. But does the devil really have the ability to do this? Yes, friend, he can. Remember Matthew 4, 8 through 9. It says, And again the devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, And all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Friend, this wouldn't be a true temptation unless Satan really does have the power to grant people the riches and glory of this world for those who are willing to serve him contractually. Friend, watch out, especially for you young people, when it comes to what kinds of music you're listening to, as there's always a spirit behind it. You know, friend, the reality is that you don't actually own your own money, and this is hard for some to comprehend. We are, in fact, merely stewards of God's money. Stewardship means to hold something in trust for somebody else. For the Christian, it means that all that we possess, we hold in trust for God, to whom we shall one day have to give an account of our stewardship, and one of the accounts we'll have to give is with our money. We don't own our money, friend, through cleverness or hard work, because God gave us the intelligence and energy to make that money in the first place. He's the true source of all wealth. On the flip side of this, there may be something you're trying to do for the Lord, and you're restricted by money in the natural realm. But friend, don't go around saying you can't afford this and you can't afford that. Simply put it in God's hands, and the true source of wealth will provide you with the means to do what He asked you to do. You know, my wife is particularly good at this. When I first met her several years ago, she was a student, and she was believing the Lord for finances to go on a missions trip. The amount was really quite high at the time. It was over $5,000, and I was like, wow, okay, you're just going to believe for that? And, and you know what? God came through with it. The Lord had asked her to go on this missions trip, and he provided the funds to do it. But it looked difficult in the natural realm. Friend, it's time to realign yourself with whom you serve in this life. Trust the Lord with your money. Trust a God you cannot see, and he will bring in the finances. Sounds difficult, doesn't it? But friend, he's the one who gave it all to you in the first place. You must never trust in uncertain riches. The Lord will provide for you the things that he desires for you in your life. Stand on passages concerning finances in the Bible. Tithe and give offerings and sow seed. Friend, you can't reap a harvest without sowing seed. You've got to, you've got to sow some seed, and the Lord will provide in due season. And to use an example from my own life, when I went to Bible college a few years back, I felt like the Lord told me, go there and I will provide a job for you in October. And it was, you know, September is when the start of the class was. So I was already committed hundreds and hundreds of miles to move before the provision came in. But because I was faithful in tithes and offerings, I knew my provision was guaranteed, friend. The Lord is indeed our provider, but we must give him some substance to work with. You've been listening to Carl Joseph and the Lions Unchained podcast. Carl is a minister who's witnessed God's supernatural power to save, heal, and deliver. Carl is a unique researcher who investigates current affairs, societal trends, technology, cults, and end time events, all through a biblical lens. Every Monday, new podcasts are uploaded, so stay tuned for the next opportunity to roar into victory. Check out carljosephministries.com for exciting articles, teachings, and discussion points. See you next week. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button 